Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Launch Space. Um, today, we are talking about Surface Duo for Flutter developers. My name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And I've got a couple of great folks from the product team here who are going to uh, talk to us about everything to do with Android, Surface Duo, Flutter. Um, before we get started with that, I do want to mention uh, this is broadcast live on aka.ms slash learn TV. Uh, for those of you on the Microsoft Developer YouTube channel, hello. If you want to ask any questions, please go to aka.ms slash learn TV to ask those questions. And uh, we'll be taking questions towards the end. we got a great lineup for you today. So, uh, Andre Diacono, do you want to get started and uh, just uh, introduce yourself? Um, sure. So, I'm Andre, um, Andre Diacono from the uh, Surface Duo Developer Experience team. I'm uh, the one in charge of uh, Flutter on this team. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I'm very excited about the things that uh, I'm going to show to you today. Um, awesome. New and Flutter. Cool. Thank you. And uh, also later on, we've got uh, Craig Dunn, who's going to uh, uh, share some info and some questions as well. So, uh, Craig, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Hey, everyone. Yep. Uh, I work with Andre on the Surface Studio Developer Experience team. And our reason for being is helping you all um, build or enhance your existing Android applications, whether they're in Flutter or any of the other developer platforms uh, that uh, target Android, uh, to get those apps working nicely on the dual screen device that is the Surface Duo. So uh, look forward to sharing with that information with you. Beautiful. It's an amazing device. Uh, so we're going to start with Andre. Andre's got some great um, information he's going to share. Uh, recently, uh, I believe it was March 3rd, Third, we had an announcement. Uh, we were at the uh, Flutter Developer Conference, uh, Flutter Engage, and made some announcements there. Andre's going to cover what we um, what we what we talked about there and uh, show us some demos as well. So take it away, Andre. Thank you. Um, so if I can share, okay. Um, so uh, as already mentioned, this. Uh, this is about the Surface Duo, first and foremost, um, for us here in this uh, context. But for Flutter developers, this is about all foldable devices, uh, not just the Surface Duo. So I'm going to go through today's agenda real quick, uh, just to uh, set some expectations for today's presentation. Um, we have four major items to go through, um, a short discussion about new form factors, an introduction to display features, a discussion about new design patterns that are enabled by these new form factors. And in particular, uh, I'll be talking about the dual screen uh, design patterns, so the ones enabled by Surface Duo. And then I'll show you a new widget, which we're proposing called the to pane widget, as well as some other API changes that will come to Flutter soon. Um, so if, uh, if we can play the first video. Um, the last year we've seen new device form factors emerge, uh, the foldables and the dual screen devices. This new form factor is great for productivity when you're in your home office or when you're on the go. Um, can we go to the next video, please? This device adapts to you when creating content, playing a game, watching a video, typing, or just reading or browsing the web. For us, Flutter developers, it means uh, new scenarios and user experiences to explore in our apps. Um, in the last video, please. First, your app can now run on two screens and not just one. You have more real estate to use and show content on and interact and the, for your users to interact with. Um, can we actually replay this one? I like it because the um, it shows the um, 
uh, it, it shows the Outlook experience uh, in the beginning. It also shows the drag and drop and other things, but I, I like it because it it, uh, it shows the um, the way a, a, a simple app that everyone uses these days, uh, uh, e email application, um, is enhanced when you uh, span it across both screens. As you can see, you can scroll through your emails on one screen and read them on the other. Um, now let's get back to the uh, presentation. Thank you. So that's an intro to um, to foldable devices and in particular the Surface Duo. Um, I have the device here. I'll be exemplifying uh, things on it from time to time. Um, so yeah, thank you. So um, this area between the two screens is non-functional. And this is called the display feature. And in Android terms and also in uh, Flutter terms, they are called display features on both platforms. If we, if we can go back to the slides, thank you. The display features that exist at this moment in the API are the hinge. So a hinge is um, part of the display that uh, is not rendering any pixels and also acts as a, a, let's say, swivel between the two screens. A fold is different from a hinge in the fact that it actually does render pixels in the area that the screen folds on. Um, so uh, good examples would be the Galaxy, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Fold uh, Z, I think it's called, and uh, the Samsung Galaxy Flip. Um, and the last um, display feature that you already probably have on your phone is called the cutout. Now, the cutout is already treated in the Flutter framework, um, and you can know how tall it is and how, how much padding you need to apply to your app by either using a safe area widget, or uh, I think you can also interrogate the media query for uh, various padding uh, measurements. But with this new API introduction, we're making this an official display feature, and it's, it's treated the same as the other ones, in the sense that a display feature is a part of the screen that you need to be aware of. It either uh, it either obstructs the screen in a way, so your app will not uh, be rendering in that area. So it wouldn't be such a good thing to to have buttons intersect with with those display those display features. And the rest of this presentation goes through um, what we can do to leverage display features and enhance our apps in, and make them better on these devices. So. The way we get display features. Oh, okay. So first, I would like to ex to explain how Flutter sees the um, screen and how it sees the display features for a device like the Surface Duo or a dual screen device. The screen available to the to the Flutter application is the whole area occupied by both screens and the hinge between the screens. So the area marked in green in this slide is the surface that the Flutter application will, will draw on. This is true for Android applications as well, since um, people watching this might, might be Android developers, and not Flutter developers. Um, so it's important to know where the display feature is because it's uh, part of your application that you control. To know uh, and interrogate uh, media query for display features, we added two new properties. One is called display features. This is an array of um, display features. <laughs> Each object in this array contains bounds, type, and state. The bounds is a rectangle um, that describes 
where exactly the display feature is located with the source let's say 0 0 for for this rectangle is going to be the top um, left corner of the left screen um, the type which for now is the, a hinge a fold or a cutout and the state the state is useful for uh, hinges and folds it's not really useful for cutouts yet. It might be, be useful in the future, but for now, the state is uh, an enum, enum that uh, tells you the posture that the device has. Yeah, and I'll exemplify. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll just gonna take a quick sneak peek. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a special slide for the posture, so I'll Take a minute to explain what they are now. So there's a difference. Your, your application will see the same screen uh, or screen real estate, uh, regardless if the device is, is uh, in this posture or in this posture or in this posture. The way that the app will render is as if this is what what uh, the screen is like all the time. So in many cases, you will you might want to take advantage of the posture. So the posture is uh, the term we use to describe the uh, angle or positioning between the screens, because it's not just the angle. Um, this is a flat posture. So this, this posture is called flat, flat. This posture is called flipped. So you use it like a normal phone. This particular device, I'm not sure about others, but this particular device picks one of the screens to render on. I'm not sure if that's always going to be the case. So this is just how this device behaves right now. This is flipped. Um, and there's another posture for, for something in between. So if you wanna have like a mini laptop, so you wanna create a keyboard at the bottom and maybe have the rest of the, of the app on the top you can interrogate for for the state of the of the display feature that you're interested in the second property that we're introducing is called hinge um, this is basically a shortcut to get to the hinge um, from from media query quickly otherwise you would need to filter over the display features array and pick the uh, display feature that is the hinge if you're only interested in the hinge and there's there's good reasoning for having the hinge be a separate property as well the main reason is that if you look at the other two display features they might actually render your app so the devices with the fold will render your app exactly as you would expect the app to be rendered there's nothing obstructing the the ui so um if the device has a fold feature you might interrogate that if you want to program for one of the for one of the um, uh, postures but normally your app will look um as as it would uh, on a normal phone and for the cutout you already have safe area that you already use and it's a good widget to use to avoid the cutout um, so when you want to um, enhance your app for du dual screen devices you will you will use the hinge a lot so we made the hinge more accessible by by having it um, uh, have uh, its own way of um, of access. I just I just piled a bunch of words there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, of course, because the so display features is never never null. It can be empty. So if a device doesn't have any display features, that's still an array and it's empty. But the hinge, since it can exist or it can not exist on a device. Uh, it can be null, so that's a nullable type. And I'll jump into um, a few demos. So first, I would like to demonstrate how these display features uh, are detected um, by the Flutter framework. 
um, there's a very simple app that I'm proposing uh, we study together. So we just create a stack uh, for the people in the for the people watching this that are not Flutter developers. A stack is more or less like a frame layout for Android, um, and we go over all the uh, display features and we map them to a positioned uh, widget. For those of you that are not Flutter developers, this is, I, I'm going to stop with, with this. So this is a way of positioning uh, things in an absolute manner on the screen. Um, and the result for this, I'll just actually uh, go to, this is the actual code. It's a bit more complicated because it, it needs it needs some more uh, filler code, let's say, uh, to get working. But this is this is how the display feature will be rendered on on a Surface Duo on the Surface Duo emulator. And I now I now realize I, I need to tell you about this emulator because it's a great emulator and we, we love it. It's ours, and we want you to use it. So um, first, I'll show you how spanning and unspanning works. And while I do that, you can see that the app visualizes or sees the whole screen as available for drawing. And this is the container that I'm, I'm drawing orange containers with blue. So orange containers with blue margins or with a blue border. And this is what gets rendered here. If this device would also have a cutout uh, at the top, you would also see a rectangle here. It's a very simple way of, of demonstrating um, how this works. If I unspan the app, so the action of going from two screens to one screen or from one screen to two screens is unspanning and spanning um, the app. This is the terminology that we use. Um, you can see there's nothing rendered because the array itself is empty. And now, again, it shows uh, the rectangle. Now, getting back to the emulator, you can find this emulator if you follow the breadcrumb of links that we'll, we'll link at the end of this presentation. There's a blog article that we wrote uh, and published for the Flutter Engage event um, that contains all of this information and links to all of the goodness we, we, we are giving you with, the, with this uh, release. And the article will be linked uh, at the end of the presentation. So getting back to PowerPoint, this was, this was uh, demo number one. Um, demo number two will just be uh, uh, displaying on the screen if there is a hinge or if there's, there's no hinge. So the previous demo used uh, the display features array. Uh, this next demo uses the hinge property uh, directly. Uh, I wasn't, uh, yeah, I think I wasn't, yeah. So this, the, the previous, yeah, the previous example showed the uh, uh, display features in use and this will show the hinge in use. And I'll quickly go to, I have a very, rudimentary and very reliable way of switching demos. If you never uh, gave a technical presentation, uh, you are not allowed to judge me. This is the safest way I know. There's nothing that works better. <laughs> um, so as you can see, it says here, the hinge is 33.6. Um, logical pixels wide. And if I unspan it, it just says no hinge. It's a very simple and boring example uh, or demo. 
and I love it because it's simple and boring. I'll, I'll go to the third one. I'll uncomment it already. So, uh, because while I'm here, why not? But if we go back to the slides, I would like to discuss a few design patterns that are enabled by this new form factor. So these are five design patterns that we um, identified so far. Um, I'm sure there are more uh, if you use your imagination, but these are um, the ones that we advise uh, app developers to look at first. They're the most they're they're the handiest, let's say, and they apply to most apps um, that can be enhanced. I'll go through them one by one um, and give you examples of how they might be used. They have some description here on the screen, but I would rather you be um, uh, I, I would rather have you pay attention to the examples because if you're if you're anything like me, you think in um, examples way more than you think in technical terms. So the first one, extended canvas, you can think of this as a maps application. So Bing Maps or Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps. The reason uh, you can simply extend the maps, the map on both screens is that if there's something behind the hinge, the user has the power to move whatever's behind the hinge into view on one of the screens. So having having the view having the view simply ignore the hinge in this case is a, is a, is a very good way of extending your app. So it it doesn't require an extra work. Um, but apart from images, so you're looking at an image and you're zoomed in, and maybe you're editing an image. Think of a, a Photoshop situation or something like that, where you can move the canvas around. Uh, or maps, there there aren't many examples where this works out well. Um, the list detail, you can think of this uh, as the email application, the Outlook example that uh, you saw earlier. You have emails on the left and uh, one e open email on the right. Um, other good examples could be anything that uh, your app has organized as a list that you go through, uh, tap on something from the list, and then a separate screen opens. You don't need to open a separate screen now. You, you can simply show it side by side. Uh, the two page, this one is also very simple to understand. It's a book. So uh, an e-reader or a reading experience uh, where you have the same type of content on the left and on the right, but they have some kind of um, order to them. So you you show the previous page on the left and the next page on the right, and the current page is in the hinge. <laughs> I, I hope someone gets that joke. So the dual view um, design pattern, uh, you can view this as a restaurant list on the left and the map of the city on the right. So it's the same collection of content or the same content, but you see it in two different ways. Because you now have two screens, you can maybe have a render of an object on the right, and you can have the scaffold of the object on the left. If you're thinking of a design uh, application or a 3D editing application, you can have two different views at the same time on the screen. The 3D application is a pretty good example in my books because that's exactly how those applications work or they have that view on desktop uh, anyway. So you have like a 3D rendering and then a top view and a front view or whatever you want to put on your screen. It's usually more perspectives of the same scene. Um, so yeah, the, the example we're going with, and, and there's a sample app for Android, which comes with the emulator, which I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be promoting a bit more uh, in a minute. Um, 
all of these are exemplified in, in that sample application or will be. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's bundled yet. I think, the, I think it is. Mm. The last design pattern would be companion pane. Um, this, and I know I don't know if I'm allowed to pick favorites, but this to me is is this is my favorite one. Um, be, yeah, because it's 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 a bit closer to my heart. Um, it's um, a way of um, of supported content with with other uh, uh, you yeah you have content on the left. And then you have actions for that content on the right. Um, the easiest example to think about is a photo editor. So you have a the photo on the left, and then you have filters and all kinds of sliders for brightness or contrast and things like that uh, on the right. So these are the design patterns. Um, I hope they. My, my hope is that they ignite your imagination and you're thinking about your own app. This is, this is why we're showing you these design patterns. So you can think of your app and how it fits in maybe one or two or maybe all of these. Um, that's one complicated application, if that's the case. But um, yeah, I'm, I, we're hoping it, it, it makes you excited for what your app can do more for for your users that happen to have these devices. So um, in the end, you care about your users and we care about your users as well. So we want them to have the best experience. And you may be wondering, okay, there's a lot of uh, design patterns. How do we actually implement them? And the answer to that um, would be for most of them, except for the extended canvas, um, all of them require uh, the developer to kind of split the app in two. Um, and the way, the, the easiest way to do that would be to use two pane. Um, by the way, for uh, React native developers and for Xamarin developers, um, the component that we're proposing is called two pane as well in those, um, in those uh, multi-platform frameworks. And uh, we also have components that do ex exactly the same thing on, on native Android. So be sure to check out the links at the end if you're interested in, in, in looking at the views that we built for, for, for these design patterns. So Tupane is a very simple concept, um, but is very powerful and um, that that makes it very likable, in my opinion, because it's not very complicated. And if it's not complicated, then you'll uh, you'll maybe uh, use it easier. It's it's easier for you to use it. So, um, Tupane has two child widgets. Um, they're called Pane One and Pane Two, and it also has uh, a few other parameters. Mainly, and I'm only listing the, the ones that we care about in this presentation here, there are a few more, which we can safely ignore for, for this talk. Uh, pane proportion, which is used in the desktop or tablet environment. So at the bottom, you have the same code rendering three different uh, versions of the same, yeah, of the same code. And this is the actual code. Um, I'll just skip to the code directly. So pane proportion for this configuration is 0 0.3. And pane priority is, um, is a bit of logic where I ask media query, how wide is the device? Is it at least 500 pixels wide? If it is, then I want to show both panes. If, if it's not wider than 500 pixels, then I just want to show pane one. And what happens is on a classic phone um, or a phone, <laughs> um, the one in the middle, uh, that rule, uh, so it's, it's not wider than 500 and it falls on the second branch of that if, and it, it, it just shows pane one. If 
the device is wider than 500, which a dual screen device uh, like the Surface Duo is, then you will see both panes. And then um, you might be wondering, OK, but why is pane proportion 0 0.3, and yet on the dual screen, we see them clearly be half and half. So they both take up 50% of the, of the screen real estate. The reason for that is that two pane adapts automatically to dual screen devices or devices with a hinge for that matter. And they, uh, if a device has a hinge or it has a display feature down the middle that splits it like a dual screen is, um, then um, the available screen gets uh, split into two areas and each pane takes each of those areas. That's a very complicated way, or I'm trying to use very many words to say that on a dual screen device, the panes will each take one screen. On other devices that are continuous and they have one single screen, they will try to respect our the two pane widget will respect your um, your parameters. So this is a great way for you to focus on the tablet and desktop design, which I think uh, you want to do, and get the dual screen experience for free. So you don't need to worry about the dual screen. This component we are we are proposing this component for you to scale up your design and get a bunch of things out of out of the box. So let's actually demo this. Um, I will go here. Yeah, I think I already, yeah, I was mindful and I already loaded this. So th let's, let's go through the code just a bit first. Um, so widget A and widget B are the two uh, ch child widget widgets. 0 0.3 uh, pain proportion. This pain proportion is used only if both panes are on the screen. In this case, the device is not wide enough. So, um, so it, be, it being not wide enough, it, it just shows pane one. If we span the app, we will see that they, they each take a screen. It's important that they each take a screen and none of them takes the hinge area because if you were to do that yourself, you would need to take the hinge area into account and not and have it not overlap with A or B. If I, if I drag this to the side a bit, you will see that the hinge area is black. Um, so yeah, you get you get this for free. Um, what I what I can show you with the simulator that you don't have on the slide is what happens when you flip the device. So this is also a, a good use case for this widget. You can you can modify this bit of logic here if you don't want this to happen. So if you can you can ask media query if I'm in portrait mode, then just show pane one, just just show the blue or a uh, widget. Um, it's up to you how you use this. This this is why this is just a boolean, pain, uh, not a boolean, but it's it's a, an enum that can be both pain one or pain two. It doesn't. It has just three values. Um, so that's the that's the two pain example. Um, I, I'll actually uh, take a break here, just a short break to mention that uh, if you have questions, please ask them. There's, this is this is actually the point where people actually have questions. Up, up until this point, it, uh, there's, there's nothing, you know, hmm, people don't go, hmm. At this point, people sometimes go, hmm, what happens if I do this with the device or do that with the device? I would love to have every version of that question so we can we can debate it. We've we've given this component a lot of thought, and even though it looks simple, it's you know it's hard to do something uh, to make something simple. 
Um, anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm just, I, I really like the component. Um, hey, Andre. I thought I'd jump in. Yeah. Um, we did have one question about how do you actually get your hands on a, a Surface Duo device, uh, and that has been answered. Um, but the, okay. the one, I just wanted to clarify myself, you know, watching this, when you look at media query and uh, pain priority and pain proportion mixed together, what I'm seeing as a beginner is that you don't necessarily have to account for all possibilities when you're actually building your application. You can just use pain priority, pain position, and media query to uh, sort of automatically account for the dual screen, the single screen, the hinge. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that looks like uh, really cool stuff. And I just want to make sure that I understand it myself. <laughs> yes. And yeah, I the way you 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 worded or the way yeah you the way you express that makes me want to uh, mention that this kind of code is not uncommon in Flutter. So this is a very it's a declarative um, it's a declarative framework. Of course, I would advise uh, um, to take this out into a separate method and have it have a nice name and mm -hmm. not have it just hang in there. But yeah, this this is this is um, not uncommon in Flutter code. And as you say, there is no piece of code here that actually even looks at the hinge. Is it horizontal? Is it vertical? Is it diagonal? I'm joking. We're not making a diagonal device. And if we were, I, I wouldn't be allowed to say that. <laughs> Maybe we have one like that. That it's like a star, and you open it, and there's yeah. The, yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> I don't want to scare people off. It's just you know inside jokes. Um, so uh, yeah, just use this uh, this two pane widget. Think of it as a two pane widget, not not as a foldable widget, if that makes sense. So. I'm gonna. I I want my app to sometimes, in some con conditions, if there's enough real estate on the screen, to display two things side by side. I know you can do that easily with a linear layout on Android or uh, with a row or with a column uh, in Flutter. But if it's just two items and they're kind of root items in your app, then considering consider using to pain instead because you have you get the uh, the foldable uh, behavior for free. Cool. Um, hey, one suggestion I have for you, uh, you know, if you do want to make a diagonal uh, application, uh, yeah, make sure that the first thing you display when it's diagonal is a shipping container vessel. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who've been so on social media this week, uh, <laughs> that it's sort of jammed between the two corners. Uh, and and a little tiny um, digging machine that's actually digging out one of the sides. You, you have to do that. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, Let, let's yeah. just agree that the two of us being in charge of a hardware device would, would end very badly in just the <laughs> shortest amount of time. It'd be fun, but uh, not very useful. So for me, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Get, uh, you continue. Getting back to yeah, getting back to business. There's a few things I would like to mention. Um, so first, there are there are uh, the contribution that we're making to Flutter. Also, make sure make sure that your application doesn't uh, have to you don't have to do much extra work to get it to work on the Surface Duo. So one thing that happens out of the box is that pop up menus uh, avoid the hinge by default. So this is the Flutter Gallery app, which Flutter developers or many Flutter developers um, already know the app. Um, we have we we're brewing or we're uh, working on a custom version of that that works uh, seamlessly with uh, with the Duo, and we're excited to show show that to you as an example application. Because it's a very complex application, I we we want to show that it's, it's uh, pretty easy to adapt it to the to the duo, um, and and make that open source. But for now, um, I'll just show I'll just show you screenshots of it. Um, 
So this is where the pop-up menu uh, would have been displayed if uh, um, in a normal version of Flutter, because it the, the pop-up always tries to render on the right hand side of the button that uh, span uh, that that opens it. Let's say, but in this case, it would overlap the the hinge, so um, we move it to the closest screen uh, that also contains the um, the yeah the source. So it behaves like the screen available to the pop up is is the one that contains the source. I think it's uh is the best way to describe it. Maybe not super accurate, but you don't need to worry about it. This is the bottom line for it. Um, the second thing uh, that works out, out of the box uh, are dialogues. So all dialogues will just um, work um, out of the box. They will not render in, in the middle of the screen, and they will not over, overlap the hinge. And you might wonder which of the two screens it picks. It picks the screen, the first screen, according to the directionality widget. If you're not uh, super familiar with that widget, uh, no worries. It's the widget that tells the rest of the app if the uh, text and widgets should go from left to right or right to left, which is the case for Arabic languages, for example. So um, for English, which, which this screenshot is from, um, the dialogue just displays on the left if there are no changes made to it. If you want it to display on the right, you will need to give it a anchor point. The anchor point in this case um, is just uh, an off. So uh, the anchor point is a coordinate on the screen where you want the dialogue, uh, so it's like, think of it like a target. So you put the target on one of the screens, the dialogue will be on that screen. The, the reason why we think this is a good solution for this, um, and, and by the way, this, this uh, I'll get into the details at the end, but the reason we think this is a good solution is that if you tap a button, for example, show di show dialogue in this case, this is not such a good example because I'm, I'm hard coding it to the right screen. But let's say you want to show the dialogue on the same screen with the button that uh, was pressed to produce that dialogue. Um, so if you have a, a button on the left screen, you tap it and it produces a dialogue. Maybe you want the dialogue to show up on that screen because that's where the user was interacting and they want to have, con or you or both, you and the user want to have continuity in their flow. You don't want to tap a button on one screen and then the dialogue shows up on the, on the other screen. Not the end of the world, but maybe you want to account for that behavior. So the, the easy way to do that would be to get the position of the screen uh, and give that position as an anchor point. So the position of a widget on the screen, if if there's a way to calculate it and the result will be an offset, you give this offset to show dialogue and it will show the dialogue on the left or the right screen according to where the button was. Um, and I, I have a uh, an example for that. Yeah. So I have an example for that. I'll need to use my super coding skills. Look at me writing hundreds of lines of code super fast. <laughs> oh. So this, yeah, this is the example code that shows the widget on the right. Mm, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a bit harder to read. The version that I had in the slides was a simplified one. But the thing we're looking at is show dialog. You can just ignore the builder because it's just a, an alert dialog. Just ignore this part. 
the important part is the anchor point. If we don't define it, so I'm just going to comment it out, it's going to default to the left screen because this is, uh, this, this is the configuration that my screen has here. I think I have something that I can uncomment here. Let's see if this works. It might not. Okay, so it's yeah because of, because of so th this is normally yeah this is a right to left language, and also two pane behaves the same way. This is something that I forgot to mention. So two pane takes into account directionality as well as all all widgets in Flutter do this. Um, and that's that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, this this now sits on the right, and as you can see, the the whole dialogue looks different, um, yeah, because of the right to left um, configuration. I'm gonna switch back over to English. So I think that that demonstrates the the way dialogues work pretty well. It's uh, yeah, it's. Mm, yeah, if, if people have questions, I'm I'm happy to answer. I'm I'm gonna uncomment this or comment. Sorry. And you know what I'm I'm gonna skip to this part to the last demo. This. Working without the cursor here, oh. because the <laughs> PowerPoint sometimes eats my cursor. I need to figure that out. Okay, so this is um, a custom route. You might be wondering, okay, but not all dialogues are shown on the screen, or not all routes in Flutter are shown on the screen with show dialog. Some of them are uh, custom routes for that purpose. So when you have a, a, a custom route defined in your app, this is a bit more advanced. Um, so your application is probably doing some really fancy stuff with the, with the custom routes. All you need to do is add a new widget that we created for enhancing those routes and making them display feature aware. And the uh, widget is called avoid display features. And you give it the normal child that you would have rendered and an anchor point, which in this case, in my example, is uh, zero. So this is the code. So this is the code that I'm actually using to do that. The one that you saw in the slide is more simplified. I'll just stick to that. And this is a custom route. This is, yeah, but maybe I should show this, show that. Yeah, the custom route is just a text uh, that's in the center of a gray container inside the scaffold. The scaffold, I needed that just, just to, for a quick way to have uh, text render correctly. And then at the top, I would make this avoid features. Now, if I use Remove this widget really quickly, theoretically. Yep, this is how the route would normally uh, render. So it will it would overlap the hinge, and of course you don't want that. So all you need to do is add avoid display features at the root of your route, and it will automatically um, yeah pick the route that is closest to the anchor point. Um, yeah, maybe that's, yeah, that's the best explanation I can, uh, that's the best way I can phrase it. The closest screen to the anchor point. The distinction is a bit important because in one of the examples, uh, the offset in this case is max finite. So this is the, the rightmost screen there is. If the device would have 10 screens, it would be the 10th. Um, so it, the anchor point doesn't actually need to intersect with the screen. It just you, it, you just use it to tell the framework which, which screen to choose, the, the closest one to choose. So yeah, that's display features. As a short recap, um, 
So Media Query now has display features and the hinge. These are new properties that we add to, to Media Query. They update your application with the, when they change, so they behave like everything else in Media Query. You don't need to register to something manually. You just use the property, and then when it changes, or when anything in Media Query changes, then your widget will re-render. Um, there's a new widget called Two Pane, uh, which <coughs> helps you implement uh, dual screen design patterns, and uh, dialogues work out work out of the box, uh, same as pop-ups. And the call to action from this, um, let's say, presentation um, is that the PRs for this are still open. This is not yet merged into Flutter. You cannot use it with the vanilla version of Flutter that you might have on your computer. Uh, but if you follow the, actually, yeah, I, I forgot we have the link. Uh, in the right, uh, top right. But there's also going to be a different link at the end of this presentation with uh, this event and also this right. top topmost link. So just follow the links, give us feedback on the PRs, um, tell us if you're happy with something, unhappy with something, just this is the time to chip in with just the minimum amount of feedback that you can give us. It really help, helps us build something that you want to use rather than something that we just imagine you want to use. So the, the, the PRs are important to us. Your feedback is important to us. Awesome. And um, thank you very much. If there are other questions, I, I guess we'll, we'll skip to that at the end, right? Thanks. Yeah, actually, this is uh, this is a part where we um, take questions. So thank you, Andre. That was great. Uh, let's bring back Craig as well. Um, I did want to say um, that all of the links that we're going to have here today are on the chat right now. But later on, they're going to be at ACA MS slash the launch space. And specifically for this show, they're at aka.ms slash the launch space service duo two. Uh, and that is actually in the chat as well, if you want to click to it right now. Um, but that's the place where we'll have all these links uh, ready to go for you. Uh, we did have some questions that came in, and Craig did field these. But I thought it was good to um, to cover these uh, in person while we have a few more minutes as well. Uh, number one is where can you get your hands on a Surface Duo or something to run Surface Duo emulation. And Andre did touch on that. He did mention the emulator. Um, but I did want to share that as well. Uh, there is more. Uh, Andre or Craig, do you want to talk about that a little bit, how they actually get their hands on it? Yeah. yeah, so let me just jump in about devices. Um, the Surface Duo went on sale in the US uh, September, I think, of last year. And just recently, uh, we extended to some additional markets around the world, so into Canada, the United Kingdom, uh, France, and Germany. So if you're in any of those countries, you can just go down to Best Buy or the equivalent, local equivalent, and pick up a Surface Duo uh, and you know maybe play, one, play with one in the store. Uh, I know a lot of people have been doing that here in the States um, to get a feel for like just how kind of thin it is and you know how, how it works. Um, so yeah, go and grab, uh, do a, do an in-person demo of the Surface Duo at your local electronics store for, for any of those countries. Um, and if you're a developer and you're not currently in one of those countries, uh, like we just mentioned and shared in the chat, um, if you go to our documentation, uh, there's a link right there for an Android Surface Duo emulator. Uh, Andre showed it a couple of times in, in the demo today. Uh, it will work with uh, your Flutter IDE. It will work with Android Studio. It will work with Visual Studio. Uh, so any of the platforms that you're interested in developing with, uh, you can use the emulator as well as, you know, if you have your hands on a device, uh, to build and test with that as well. All right. Mm -hmm. And to make it work with the uh, Surface Duo, you can use uh, vanilla Flutter, but then you need to add the media query additions that we've created that take into account the hinge, correct? And how yes. Is that? Yeah. Um, so if you follow the links that we'll, we'll, we are we are providing, there's a how to use this custom version for now. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to have this merged in the in the next 
couple of months. We can't be we, we can't be sure about the timing for it because it's there's a lot of moving parts that all need to be at a certain quality to get this merged. But uh, yeah, if for now there's the, we have a dedicated page to help you go through the steps that you need to go through to have this running on your device. And there's one other small detail that I wanted to talk about, about the emulator. So there is a foldable emulator provided by Google. So you have that in Android Studio Beta. I, I, maybe it's also in, uh, in, the, in, in the stable version of Android Studio, but it, you can certainly find it in the beta version. The main difference between that emulator, which is great, you should still use that. I mean, if you're building a, an app for, your, for a foldable, get your hands on as many foldable emulators uh, and test it out. Because yeah, you, you need to test it on, on as many devices as you can. And emulators are a great cheap way to do that. Um, but the main difference between the, the two or the, the main advantage of the one we provide and we uh, advise you to also test on is that it's for now it's the only one as far as I'm as I know that has the hinge the ones that you have in Android studio are a continuous screen so they emulate the the Samsung devices for example and they're great use them please use them but also use ours because uh, yeah you want to make sure that the hinge is taken into account and the, the cheapest way to do that is not to go to Best Buy, although we we would love to see you do, do, do this in, in your videos. But yeah, the cheapest way is to install the, the piece of software that's free from us. Cool. Uh, and also, there was a little bit more detailed question about using the two pane um, on different platforms. Uh, and Craig did cover that. But Craig, do you want to elaborate on that as well? Um, yeah, so Andre, just to fill you in, someone was asking about um, putting the two pane widget into their Flutter apps and then working on different platforms. And so I basically just shared with them that the example layout you showed for a desktop where there was like a 30 70 split is the kind of behavior that people can expect on larger devices. And you know, on the smaller devices, it will depend on the configuration for the width of pane A and the pane priority that you set. And then on foldables with a hinge or, or so on, it'll snap automatically to the, the hinge or fold. So um, does that pretty much cover it? I think that yeah. does. Um, I think there's a few things also to mention here since you know people are, are asking and they're interested. There's also Flutter Web to mention. We know that it doesn't work on Flutter Web on a foldable device. There's a lot of things that need to happen for that to work. First, you would need to have a, a, a browser that enables that. And Craig, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the Edge browser that comes prepackaged with the device does have foldable support. Mm -hmm. um, and also, this contribution for now only works on, on a Flutter as a native application. But we do have it in our roadmap to investigate and also invest in making it work on Flutter Web, which is Flutter Web for for people that are are new to Flutter in this video. Flutter Web is is super hot in the community right now, and we really want to make it even hotter with uh, with the the Hinge support as well. Sweet. Okay. Well, thank you. I think that's a great place to wrap up. Uh, thank you, Andre. Thank you, Craig. That's a lot of great information. Um, for those of you who are interested in links, uh, aka.ms slash the launch space surface duo two uh, is the place to go. Uh, we'll have all the links that we have there and on our show page. Um, also, uh, for future uh, episodes, please do check out aka.ms slash the launch space. And we'll see you at the next show. Thanks, Craig, and thanks, Andre. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.